The Lord be with you. We begin with our canticle, Christ died for our sins, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Christ died for our sins, and rose that we might live. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not snatch at equality with God. Lord Jesus, he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Lord Jesus, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Lord Jesus, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Lord Jesus, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Lord Jesus, tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins and rose that we might live. Please stand. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Bountiful God, you gather people into your realm and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us that empowered by your spirit, we may love your whole creation through Jesus Christ, who makes all things new and lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We have bread and we pray that it may become the very body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everybody say, Amen. And we have wine. Mingled with a little water to remind us that from his side it is crucifixion flowed both blood and water. And we pray that this may become the very blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Be present, be present, O Jesus, our great high priest, as you were present to your disciples, and be known to us in the breaking of bread. Please stand. We've given alms, we have bread and wine, now we celebrate. Lord Jesus, thank you. I give you what you first gave me, I give you my hands to do your work. I give you my feet to go your way. I give you my eyes to see as you see. I give you my tongue to speak your words. I give you my mind to think as you think. I give you my heart so that you may love in me. I give you my spirit so that you may pray in me. I give you myself so that you may grow in me. 
All things come of you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Let us love one another that we may celebrate this holy mystery in peace. A blessing of peace, a sacrifice of praise. Holy things for holy people, thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give praise and thanks to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, and in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Holy, mighty, and most merciful Lord, heaven and earth are indeed full of your glory. In great love you sent Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the recalling of me. Mm -hmm. 
remembering then his precious life, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension, we await his coming in glory as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Everybody say, thanks be to God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. O oh Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, the body of Christ given for us, everybody say, Amen. And the blood of Christ shed for us, everybody say, Amen. May we take and eat these in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
soul of Christ. Body of Christ. Blood of Christ. Jesus, my Savior, dwell in me. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We give you thanks that we can receive you both in person and spiritually through the healing power of this gift of life. And through that same Jesus Christ, living and reigning with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Now we welcome Jesus in the gospel as we sing, Be Not Afraid, Sing Out for Joy, Christ is Risen, Alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is Risen, Alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, Those who love me will keep my word and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me doesn't keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it's from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I'm still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I've said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I'm going away and I'm coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, O Christ, in the name of our one, true, holy, and living Lord, everybody say, Amen, and please be seated. When I was in grade seven and eight, I got into religious discussions 
no surprise, right? I did. And one of my best friends was a, min a member of the Alliance Church in Owen Sound. At that time, the Alliance Church, although not classified as a Pentecostal church, was a church that certainly was different in its worship practices than us Anglicans. They were very demonstrative, of course, um, and they were very much Jesus folk. And they talked about that a lot. So my friend and I would get into these discussions. And to make a long story short, when I was 13 or 14, she always made me feel somehow lesser a Christian because my experience was so different from hers. I thought about this in the context of Jesus saying to his disciples, I'm not going to be with you much longer. And he's saying this before Holy Week, before his crucifixion and resurrection. I'm not going to be here much longer. I want to tell you that. But I don't want you to be afraid. And I say, I, th I thought of that um, that my, what I was like at 14 and confronting a different expression of Christianity and feeling somehow inferior because I wasn't a Jesus person. I wasn't passionately in love with Jesus. I was a good church kid. I was really a good church kid, but I wasn't passionately involved in Jesus. Well, what Jesus is saying to his disciples is, I'm not going to leave you. you. You have me in your heart. And that's what'll give you the peace. And that's why you're not going to be afraid. They probably really didn't understand this in any way until Pentecost Day. And I'll talk more about that once we get to Pentecost in a couple of weeks. But I think of them at this stage in their relationship with Jesus, wondering what is he talking about? Am I really a good disciple if I don't know what he's talking about? Who is this advocate? Now I mention this because I suspect many of us are like those apostles. We're Lutherans. Lutherans are not noted for their leaping up and down and shouting, Jesus, 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 in worship. That's not our style. And yet here's Jesus saying to, may I say, people probably a lot like us, faithful people, but, well, that kind of enthusiasm is just sort of strange to us. I suspect it was for the apostles. Wouldn't surprise me. And if that's in any way true, doesn't that give us some real hope? I can't help but feel that many of us who worship as we do, who express ourselves through our lives as Christians, as we tend to do, as Lutherans, as Anglicans, as United Church, as Roman Catholics, whatever, sort of mainline types. I can't help but feel that we're just the same kind of Christians, even though we don't get up in the pews and yell and wave and that sort of stuff. And if we are, if I'm right about this, so were the apostles. They needed that fire of the Holy Spirit to get them going. And yet, they were in love with Jesus all that time. I think we are too. We're just quieter about it. I have to tell the the old Anglican joke to you. It's true. 
but it is funny. There is a church in London, and I keep forgetting which one it is, but it's one of the old established parish churches in Westminster One, downtown, right? So you can visit it. And when you visit it, you'll see this big plaque on the wall dedicated to a church sexton, quote, who served this parish without enthusiasm for 60 years. Well, a lot of us Anglicans think, yeah, that's it. That's the way it is. We serve the Lord, but without enthusiasm. And what they meant, because this was the 18th century, that was the signal, you know, that you weren't a Methodist, that you weren't one of the Holy Spirit types, you know, that were grabbing people and saying, are you Jesus people or not? Yeah, that's what it meant. And so it comes out as without enthusiasm, not exactly the way that we think of the word enthusiasm. But the point is made. Here we are serving Christ in our way, in our time. And we shouldn't be ashamed of that when we encounter people who will challenge who we are. We are part of Jesus Christ. We're incorporated into him. We were in our baptisms. And I say it again and again and again, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit in our baptisms as well as having water poured over us. And I know that if you have Pentecostal friends, they will say you're not a real Christian unless you have the fire of the Holy Spirit in you. This Holy Spirit comes down, you'll be speaking in tongues, you'll, doing, you'll be doing miraculous work. That's the mark for them of a real Christian. And I'm saying to us, I'm trying to encourage us, it doesn't have to be that way. What I saw this weekend, all those folks, you folks, down there receiving what I think of as gifts, sorting them out, putting them attractively on the tables, welcoming people to this house of God and serving the folks who came, the guests who came with smiles and seeing the folks leaving with smiles, with their treasures. That to me is just as powerful an expression of the purest of faith than anything else. Well, if the Holy Spirit falls down upon each one of us and we speak in tongues and we dance for joy, hallelujah. And again, I wanna talk about that on Pentecost Sunday more. But if that's not the gift that Jesus gives us, the gifts he gives us are just as useful and powerful in the world that he and God created to be good. Think about that. He is in us, we are not alone. We do not need to be afraid. He is in us, he is with us, he's inspiring us. As I often say, to be more than we can ask or imagine. Thanks be to God. Let's stand and say or sing what we believe. The Apostles' Creed, the ancient baptismal creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. 
On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, singing, We thank you. Father, we give thanks for Jesus' holy church, throughout the whole world. And we give thanks that this season of resurrection can be for all of us a time of hope, a time of refreshment, a time of new beginnings. Faithful Father, we thank you. And we thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you that being free in Christ, we can quickly repent. We can confess with a sincere heart. We can ask forgiveness of you and our neighbor, and we can humbly make up for our wrongs. Faithful Father, we thank you. We thank you for our world, fallen though it is, troubled though it is thinking especially, as always, about Ukraine and in those places like Buffalo where racism leads to death. We thank you that in you evil will eventually be utterly destroyed, vanquished under the Lordship of Jesus. Faithful Father, we thank you. Thank you for our community here, our community of Chesley and the district. Thank you that we as Christians are all growing in love, in powerful witness to Christ, and in genuine humility. Faithful Father, we thank you. And for that good earth which you have given us, for the springtime, the planting, our farmers who work the land, for an abundant harvest to come, we trust. Faithful Father, we thank you for your healing already taking place, for healings of heart and soul and body and mind, healings among those sick and suffering, especially those whom we now lift up before you. And for the comfort you bring, even to the hard-hearted and the despairing, for the strength and inspiration you give all caregivers of all kinds, everywhere. Faithful Father, we thank you. And we thank you for those who have died. For those who have died in the hope of the resurrection 
and those who have not. We name them before you. And for the confidence you give us that whatever befalls, we can end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach. Faithful Father, we thank you. Defend us, deliver us, and in your compassion protect us, O Lord, by your grace. Life-giving God, in the holy mystery of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you send light to conquer darkness. In him, create us anew as Easter people, that we may reveal your good news through that same Lord, our brother, our friend, our lover, our master, everybody say, Amen. Well, we continue our prayers as we sing, we plow the fields and scatter. And as we do, I'll lead you outside to the steps there and the short ceremony of the blessing of seeds and soil and water and our district of Chesley itself. Let's sing, we plow the fields and scatter. We plow the fields and scatter the good seed on the land. But it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. He sends the snow in winter, the warmth to swell the grain. The breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all his love. He only is the maker of all things near and far. He paints the wayside flower, he lights the evening star. The winds and waves obey him, by him the birds are fed. Much more to us, his children, he gives our daily bread. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord, for all his love. We thank thee then, O oh Father, for all things bright and good, the seed time and the harvest, our life, our health, our food. No gifts have we to offer, for all thy love imparts. But that which thou desirest, our humble, thankful hearts. All good gifts around us are sent.
Lord, oh, thank the Lord for all his love. A bit of sunshine, yeah. It'll come, it'll come. Always does. I put, I had seeds on the altar and um, I've already put seeds in here because I didn't know what the weather was going to be like, right? And it could have been worse. <laughs> the sun will come out right tomorrow. Uh. Yes, it will. <laughs> okay, lessons from the earth. This is from the gospel according to Mark. Jesus says, the kingdom of God as is as if somebody should scatter seed upon the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should sprout and grow. But the person doesn't know how. The earth produces of itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe at once, that person puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Jesus also says, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth, yet when it's sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make their nests in its shade. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God, our Creator, you have ordered seed time, sunshine, rain, and harvest. You've created the seed, the soil, and the water, so there may be food for all your people. May we honor and care for these elements that sustain our earthly life. As the food nourishes our body, may we be filled with praise and thanksgiving for our Creator. O oh God, you have created and given us soil. Bless the soil that it may feed and nourish the seed. Bless those who work the soil and harvest the produce. O oh God, you have given us seed. May the miracle of life within these seeds burst forth, yielding a bountiful harvest. Bless the seeds and those who plant them. Now I'm supposed to touch the water. Here we are. <laughs> oh God, you have created water. Bless the water. Let it come as rain at the right time in the proper amount so that the seed may grow and flourish. Let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for your wonderful creation, for the seed and the soil and the water, the seasons of the year and the cycle of nature. Walk with those who till, plant, and care for the fields, that they may be strengthened by your constant presence in all their labors. Give us favorable weather, that our farming efforts may not be in vain. May the hungry be fed, and may we always be mindful of their needs. May Canada and all governments throughout the world make good, just, and wise decisions about food for their people. Keep us aware and sensitive to the needs of farmers and their families. May they have a fair return for their efforts. Bless all those who work in agricultural businesses this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Now, God bless Chesley. God bless Chesley District. God bless its farmers. God bless its homes. God bless its people. May he continually visit us with his mercy, surround us with his love, 
and make us perfect to do his will. Amen. Now, go in peace. Make Christ known. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Okay.